to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning. I love it when you drink your green smoothie and it's got dog hair. <laughs> I guess no food is complete without dog hair in it. I got foamy coffee, so I can't tell. <laughs> Hugh says it's there. I'll probably find it. Okay, uh, glucose crash, had a seizure, what a morning. Oh, yeah, that's not a good way to start the morning for sure. So I started my morning at midnight, <laughs> but I finally fell back asleep around 4. Uh, more dog hair. Jeez. Okay. Um, okay, so our badge holders did come yesterday for the um, Breakfast with Spaniels fan club at the Expos. So be sure to stop by our booth in Albany. Um and get your badge and your badge holder so that you can identify each other. And we will also have them at the Super Pets Expo in Edison the following weekend. Um, dog hair is very nutritious. Yeah, it's a great source of protein for sure. Uh, so I wanted to talk about cancer. I can't remember what I was thinking about at 4 o'clock this morning. But I, uh, Teresa Carpenter had a great idea yesterday morning. And I'm going to try to stick with it for the next week. Um, the Truth About Pet Cancer series starts tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if everyone could tune in and watch it, if you haven't signed up yet, the link is on my Facebook page. Um, sign up for it and watch it. And then that's what I'm going to talk about on Thursday morning. And then Friday morning we'll talk about Thursday nights and... I'm not sure what's going on on Saturday. Um, we might have to do something different on Saturday because the expo goes from 9 till 5. So I don't think I can do a 9 o'clock Facebook Live. And um, registration starts at 8 a.m. So I don't know if I have some Breakfast with Spaniels people there. We might just uh, go on a little bit early on Saturday morning. So keep your ears peeled. We might be starting a little bit early on Saturday, maybe 8.30-ish. Um, if we get a chance so and then Sunday we should be our normal time before we leave Albany so um, where can we sign up for your talk on Saturday in Edison you don't need to sign up just um, come to the expo and I did post a link yesterday for a discount on the Super Pet Expo tickets so if you are going to the Super Pet Expo in Edison on the 13th, 14th, and 15th, when you go to their website to buy tickets, we have our own special code for a discount. It is BS, uh, BWS, Breakfast with Spaniels. So just type in BWS, and that's our promo code, and you'll get $3 off your tickets. Um, oh, your little one was just diagnosed with cancer. I'm devastated on Yunnan Bial. Um, waiting to hear from the doctor. So, yeah, this Saturday is in Albany, uh, the following weekend's Edison. So, um, I, yeah, the cancer diagnosis kind of throws you for a loop, knocks your socks off, and makes your head spin. Um, I saw a beautiful dog yesterday that has an osteosarcoma on the face, which is a really unusual place for it. Um, the good news is it has not spread to the lungs. However, it's being very locally aggressive in that area. So, you know, one of the problems with cancers is that 
a lot of times we can't predict what they're going to do. Um, because we've seen so many, generally we have a pretty good idea where they're going to go, how they're going to spread, what they're going to do. But there's just no guarantees with that. And when we're using our alternative therapies, sometimes we totally change the course of the disease. Um, one of the th I know what I wanted to talk about. One of the things that is really important, if your dog or cat is undergoing, has a cancer diagnosis, and you seek out an oncologist, which I strongly recommend that when you get that diagnosis, you go have a conversation with an oncologist. If there is an oncologist near you that you can get into, at least go have a conversation because they will give you the stats. They'll give you the prognosis. They'll give you, you know, what the typical course of the disease for that particular cancer is. That's good information to have. doesn't mean you have to undergo chemo. It doesn't mean you have to undergo radiation. It just means that you have more information and you know what you're up against. If you, okay. Sorry, interruption. If you opt for chemo or radiation and you're also planning on using herbs, antioxidants, food therapy, golden paste, anything out of the ordinary, make sure you tell them what you're doing. Many, many times the chemo protocols that are used are used because they're, they want oxidation to occur. And if we are giving a lot of antioxidants, we're actually making the chemotherapy less effective. And here's the thing, the chemo that they use in dogs and cats is much less aggressive than what is used in people. That's why the animals don't have as many side effects because the cancer protocols are really damped down com com compared to what we use for people. And that's why people have so many side effects. But the bad news is, um, so this dog yesterday, uh, the considerations, because it was a locally aggressive cancer on the face that hadn't spread, the considerations, um, the main consideration was radiation therapy. And I think it was probably a decent answer in this particular case because this tumor was being very locally aggressive. It's doubled in size in a week. And even though it hasn't spread, the cancer could be the demise of the dog because it's being very locally aggressive. And so if it eats a big hole in that dog's face and the teeth are falling out and the dog can't eat, that's going to cause the death of the dog, even if the cancer doesn't spread anywhere else. The problem with doing radiation on this particular cancer is there's two types of radiation. Are you posing? So the two types of radiation are palliative, where they use a lower dose of radiation more often. So usually the pet will go in four or five days in a row for four weeks in a row, put under anesthesia, and then have radiation applied to the area. That's actually called palliative radiation, where they're using a lower dose. What it does is it kills off the most, um, the most rapidly dividing cancer cells and the weakest cancer cells, but it leaves the strongest cancer cells to come back bigger and badder than ever. So the other option would be to do the cyber knife where they hit it with a lot higher doses of radiation and they only do, I think it was three treatments they were going to do on this dog. So three very high dose radiation treatments are more likely to kill off a higher percentage of the cancer cells than that low dose long drawn out. The biggest problem, the cyber knife is incredibly expensive. It was going to be about $12,000 versus the um, typical radiation, which was going to be more like five to 6,000. Um, this is where insurance comes in real handy. So um, I'm pretty sure that this dog was going to go have the cyber knife and um, I did not start the dog on any supplements, any herbs. Um, we looked at the diet to tweak it just for completeness and making sure that we were, the dog was blood deficient, that we were taking care of that. But um, I couldn't okay any herbs or anything else to be used with this until she talks to the oncologist to find out what will play well with the radiation. And after radiation, if they decide to use any chemo, which I'm not sure I would do that, but I th thought the cyber knife sounded like a halfway decent idea. Um, we need to know 
what's going to be used so that we do not interfere with anything. Because the last thing you want to do is give your dog a bunch of chemo um, chemicals that will have some side effects and will make your dog feel bad. And then we make it so that the drug doesn't work very well because we're using herbs and antioxidants and other things, anti-inflammatories. So we need to know, you know, what will play well. The biggest problem is most of the oncologists, the traditional oncologists, aren't familiar with all the herbs and the food therapy and the things that we might want to do on our side. So basically, we just need to know how, what chemical are you going to use? How does that chemical work? Does it work through oxygen? Does it work through inflammation? Is, you know, where is it interrupting the pathway so that we know what we can use that'll play well with it? So if you have a pet who's undergoing chemo or radiation, has a cancer diagnosis, don't hide that stuff from your oncologist. You need to tell them, hey, these are the things I'm using. Make sure that it's not going to interfere. Because when you're fighting for their life, you want to make sure that you're fighting, <coughs> fighting appropriately with everything that you have. Okay, I got to get going. Um, I got tons of work to do today. I think Hugh has tons of work to do today too. I just never know what it is because I'm never here. <laughs> I know he's got shipping. <laughs>